All right. So you're an investor. You've got money in the market. You're making money. You're growing your wealth. Well, at some point, you're going to want to evaluate your investment performance. It turns out there are a number of measures, a number of ways to evaluate your performance, and they each are relevant in various contexts. So let's go back to CAPM. Yes, let's go back to CAPM. I did a number of videos on CAPM. You can check out those videos if you follow these links here. But in these videos, I mentioned the Sharp Ratio. A viewer came back and said, hey, Brian, you really should do a video about the Sharp Ratio. Help us understand that Sharp Ratio better. Well, I'm going to do one better. I'm going to talk about a number of different performance measures. Let's go ahead and start with the Sharp Ratio. Here we're taking our portfolio return minus the risk-free rate and dividing by standard deviation. So this is kind of a measure of portfolio diversification. It's related to the capital market line. I have a video on the capital market line. Check it out by following that link right there. This is relevant when you're talking about your total portfolio. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you're talking about just a component of your portfolio, whether that's a single asset or a mutual fund or whatever it might be, because a lot of those risks can be diversified away. So we don't want to think about that in this context. Again, full portfolio measure. In contrast, we have the trainer measure. So again, we're talking about return here, minus the risk-free rate, but instead of dividing by standard deviation, we're going to divide by beta. In this case, all we care about is systematic risk. We don't care about the diversifiable risk. Okay? That can be diversified away. This makes sense. We're talking about a component of a portfolio in the opposite of the sharp ratio. We're talking about the portfolio as a whole. This is related to the security market line. I have a video on the security market line. Look at it by following that link right there. And as a bonus, I've got a special video where I really go into great detail about the difference between a security market line and a capital market line. Check out that video right here. Another measure is Jensen's alpha. Here we got the return of a portfolio. And then we're going to subtract this big quantity. Well, that big quantity looks an awful lot like CAPM. So let's go back to CAPM here. There's a CAPM formula. Here we're saying that, well, maybe this isn't going to be equal. So in the event that the return doesn't match the predicted return of cap M. That's not equal. We're going to say, hey, that's alpha. So we're going to say alpha is going to be equal to our portfolio return minus this whole number here. Okay. So the expected return that we get from cap M, that's going to be Jensen's alpha. It's related to trainer in that we're using beta again, not a standard deviation here. Final, final measure here is going to be the Sortino ratio here. We're saying, look, things aren't always good and things aren't always bad. But when you think about risk, it is that way, right? So positive returns and negative returns are risk. It's, it's volatility, right? But in reality, as a, as a person, as an investor, we love the upside. We don't like the downside. So let's really think about that downside part. So instead of dividing by standard deviation, we're only going to divide by the standard deviation of when things are bad, when things are negative in terms of returns. That's the Sortino ratio. One thing we have in common for all four of these measures is it's not just about return. We need some measure of risk in there to help us evaluate how effective uh, the returns were given the risk we were taking. So we're not going to use this in terms of how to evaluate our performance. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example here. So we got the risk-free rate at 3%. We got the market at 15%. Stop this video you need to, but here's a bunch of numbers. So uh, we have four different managers or four different investors. If we go just by that return, which we're saying is not a good way to do it, Manager A, clearly the better manager, has the highest return of all of these. Now, but if we go to the sharp ratio, here we say, hey, manager B actually has the best sharp ratio. When we compare that return to the standard deviation of risk we were taking, manager B is the best. Now, if we do, instead of looking at standard deviation, we look at beta, which is the trainer measure. Then, hey, manager C is now the better performing manager. Jensen's alpha. So again, kind of alpha versus our expected return based on beta. Here we say, hey, manager D is actually the best manager out here. Finally, Sortino ratio, looking at just that downside deviation, we're going to see manager A is the best. So the conclusion here is not all, all these measures are going to be equal. They're not going to come to the same conclusion. Clearly, here we have four different managers, four different ones come on top, depending on which measure we use. And again, the context matters. So how are you evaluating this in what context of your total portfolio? Thanks so much for listening. Happy trading out there. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Brian Kozlowski.